Hey guys, Charles from Halt's Boots here, and today we are doing a full in-depth and on-foot review of the Superfly 9 Elite FG. So unfortunately today, this won't be as so much of an unboxing as it will just be showing you the boots. I try my best to get the boxes when I'm doing these reviews, but sometimes it's just a heck of a lot cheaper to get the boots without the box or even the bag sometimes. So unfortunately I don't have the box. I can tell you it would have come in a silver Nike box and it has a yellow bag that almost matches this completely. So we're not missing out on too much there. It's just, you know, I do like that extra wow factor of seeing them come out of the boots for the first time, but Hey, what can you do? When you get a good deal, you gotta take a good deal. So I just wanna tell you guys, I have had these in hand before, maybe not this color, and I've also had the Vapors. We've sold tons of them through holtzboots.com, so this isn't my first time holding these or looking at them, but I will tell you that this will be my first time wearing a pair of either the Vapor or the Superfly. I haven't worn a pair of Superflies since the Fives, I believe, back in 2016 and 2017, so, you know, I don't know what to expect with these. I've heard mixed reviews, but obviously the newest thing is that they have this new air zoom unit. And I want to say they had them on the original, uh, not Superfly, but Vapor Ones back in the 90s, like late 90s, early 2000s, and then got rid of it. So even though it's technically like a quote new technology, it's really not because Nike's been doing this forever with shoes and then they used to do them with their boots way back in the day. So it's just kind of a return and I'm hoping it will be something that's better. And I've also heard mixed reviews on people feeling this air zoom unit and not feeling it. So that's obviously gonna be the most, um, most important thing I'm looking for when reviewing these boots is how exactly does this air zoom, does, does this air zoom unit feel? And it has seemed for the last four or five years now that the Superflies and Vapors are almost exactly the same, just minus the collar. And it was really different back when I wore the Superfly 5 because the Superfly 5 came out with the Vapor 11 and they're both completely different boots. But now if we're looking at, at the Vapor 15 and the you know Superfly 9, it's really the same boot altogether, just the collar. So I don't really know what, I don't really know if I like that or not. I did kind of like having two different kinds of boots all together back in the day, but you know, I guess it just, it just depends on if you prefer the collar or not. And obviously these collars don't provide any sort of real ankle stability. Uh, I would argue that maybe they help keep your foot in a bit more and keep it a bit more secure, but there's nothing really super valuable about collars on boots. It's why I usually prefer low cut boots, but you know, I'm still excited to try these and just giving this, um, giving this boot a try. And I have, I have seen these TriStar studs on the Phantom GT, or no, Phantom GX, sorry. And I didn't mind those. I didn't find that they really were a big deal. But the thing with the Phantom GX sole plate is that it was super flimsy. So I'm actually gonna take the stuffing out real quick and see how this sole plate is. Yeah, so this sole plate is very rigid. It is not, you know, it's, it's flexible where it should be a little bit up in the toe, but for the most part, this is a very stable sole plate. Nothing like the GX, which you could turn it and really fold any which way. And I think I'm gonna like this a bit more. You know, I wasn't a fan of the Carbitex insert or the, you know, speed, Speed Portal and Speed Flow sole plates in terms of their rigidity, but you know, I think it's better than having just boots that um, are, you know, just really flimsy sole plates all together. So that is a kind of a plus. We're gonna have more of a sturdy sole plate and we get to try these new star, these tri-star studs, which is a mouthful. And you know, it still has like the, more of just like a bladed heel for the sole plate, just like the OG, you know, Superflies. Well, I guess not OG, but how the Superflies and Vapors have always been with their heels. Something else I wanted to mention about this specific pair of Superfly 9s is that these are actually pro issued. And I can't tell you where I got them from, but it was a decent deal. And that just really means that these were made in Bosnia. Uh, I don't know the lighting. Yeah, you probably won't be able to see it. Ah, oh, crud, I cannot get rid of there. But, but um, it's, a, it's a made in Bosnia pair. Now, just because they're like, let's say, quote, pro issued, that doesn't mean that they were made in the Montebaluna factory where they were like, assembled by hand and custom built for the player's foot because it, it wasn't, it's just a pair that comes from Bosnia and all the Nike athletes actually get um, their boots from the Bosnia factory versus China and I think Vietnam's where they make them as well, maybe even another, um, maybe Malaysia as well, I can't remember, but um, so, that, so that just kind of means that it was made in a factory and does that mean the quality is any difference? I don't think so. I don't have an exact colorway of this in a, like a made in China pair, if that makes sense. Like, and the made in China is still at the Chinese, at the, the Chinese Nike factory. That doesn't mean it's a fake or um, like a replica or anything like that, but it's just kind of an interesting um, thing about this boot and I kind of wanted to share. Moving on to the insole real quick, you can see here how it's kind of indented and that's just kind of to 
um, allow space for that Arizona to kind of pop off, like or pop up off of the sole plate on the inside and kind of just allow like that cushion to, to be there underneath your foot. So I didn't really realize that the air zoom unit came up like that until I looked at this insert and we'll see how the lighting is, but you can definitely see the air zoom insert, just all those like lines back in there. And it's actually um, raised and elevated, like popped up off the, like the insole there. So I don't know how well you can tell that little detail, but just something else that's pretty cool. And when I put my hand in there to feel it, it's, it's more of like a spongy feel than like a, um, like a pocket full of air, kind of like how the old Nike shoes used to be, or maybe still are like just like tennis shoes and stuff. And it's just another little cool detail and I guess makes sense why they would have to do that instead of like having the sole plate kind of bubble out more on the bottom, they just do it on the top, which again, yeah, I, I agree with that. Not much more to discuss about this boot other than, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of excited to wear it and, and get it on my feet. And it is, it does have the Nike ACC, which is supposed to stand for all condition control. And as I've probably said a thousand times before, it doesn't really do crap. Um, it's supposed to just help you with your touch and just a grip on the ball when it's raining. But to be honest, the only thing I've really found that helps with grip on the ball is, you know, rubber elements on any kind of model or like how the Phantom GX has the grip knit or the, the grip weave or grip knit, whatever that technology is that's like here on the Phantom GT. That's what I found works the best for these boots. So, or for, for touch on the ball. So ACC doesn't really do anything, but if anything, it kind of just allows people to know that it's an elite version or like top model boot. That's all I have for these boots and I'm actually playing tonight and I'm gonna try these out and just kind of see how I like them. It's just gonna be, I think six aside, so nothing super tense or serious or anything like that, but just a good start to get the feel for the boot and over the next week or so, I'm gonna try these on, get a full review and we're now gonna jump into that section of the video now. All right guys, so it's been about, I think a week since I did the unboxing. Well, kind of not really unboxing, but kind of just showed you guys the boots. I wore them four or five times, once or twice on grass, the rest on turf. So I got a good feel for the sole plate. Um, I'll get into that later, but overall, you know, I think I got a good, good idea on how this boot performs. I don't think I was able to break them in fully. I'll go into depth on that as well. And we're just gonna go ahead, jump right into the, the <laughs> jump right into the review and get going. So one thing I did forget to mention in the unboxing was the retail price, at least I think I did. And if I didn't, then you can hear it twice, but it was $275 for the Superfly 9s. And I believe the Vapors run to 50, maybe 230, I think somewhere in between. So about what we've been seeing Superflies go for the last several years. I think maybe they've gone up in the last four, but you know, for the most part, um, it is what you can expect with Nike Elite boots. So first we're gonna talk about the sole plate and just go in depth on that. Uh, the biggest piece of tech on this boot and kind of the whole new revolution of this generation of Superfly is the air zoom unit down below. It's also on the Vapor. It says air zoom right there. And you know, it provided a cushion. You could see in the unboxing a couple seconds ago that, you know, you can see the actual like AirPod or air zoom unit in there. I don't really know what exactly it's called. I forget. But you know, I thought that was interesting. And first putting these on feet, the first 30 seconds I was, I, you know, just did a couple of jogs, did some warm ups. And you know, you could definitely feel the air zoom unit. And after that, it kind of went away. I didn't, I didn't really um, think about it. So I, the feeling was still there. I think I just switched it off and tuned it out um, naturally or my, my brain did or something like that. And I didn't really feel like it provided anything extra from this boot. I don't think the air zoom unit really helps or doesn't help. For the most part, my foot was uncomfortable in these boots just because I don't think they're meant for wide feet. Um, and, I, and again, I'll go into more detail about that, but you know, I don't think the air zoom unit really helped that much. And it also really felt weird whenever I, um, usually when I break in boots, like I've said before, uh, I'll leave them unlaced a little bit and then I'll tie them up when I go into actual training. But you know, these just, the first 20 minutes I just couldn't do it. So I switched into a pair of Hypervenom 3s and it was just a completely different sensation. It almost felt alien going from that air zoom unit to the just standard sole play. I think it would have felt weird with any boots. And um, you know, that's how I kind of just know that the air zoom unit is there and it is, I guess do, I guess it is doing something or at least it's there, but I don't really think it adds to performance. So it definitely made my feet feel weird and kind of threw me off for the first couple minutes afterwards. I felt, I felt almost like two inches shorter. Like I was a lot lower to the ground. Um, you know, but nothing super special about the air zoom unit. I did also hear from a friend, I believe Las Vegas Boots, I can't remember his full um, Instagram handle, but he was telling me that the air zoom unit is also supposed to help with like active recovery or like pre-recovery. How much of that is true, I don't know. I really feel like personally, because of the way my foot shape is, I would like more cushion up in the arch versus down in the forefoot. I never really get issues in the forefoot with pains, cramps. It's always up in the arch and on the sides of my feet. So. You know, it is what it is. Um, 
Doesn't really help. I don't personally think it made a difference. Let me know down below if it, if it did for you guys. And I also like that, you know, it has the same studs as the Phantom GX, but also it wasn't a flimsy sole plate like the GX. It is firm. Even though you do have the air zoom unit here, it does bend right there, but you know, this arch area here is very, very sturdy. The heel is very, very sturdy. The heel counter is sturdy. And that's one, one cool um, aspect of this boot. Moving on to lockdown, I felt that they held my foot in pretty well. I did wear grip socks, so I can't say how they would have felt without grip socks. I think um, maybe I should start doing that just to get a better feel for boots. But you know, I, at this point, I think most players wear grip socks, and that's kind of just what I do naturally. So I kind of just review the boots as I wear them because I'm, and if I'm training, playing, you know, pickup or anything like that, I'm not gonna not wear grip socks, but. Overall, lockdown was good. These boots are very snug fit, and I think you could probably get away without wearing laces. Maybe not when you break them in and they're stretched out, they might slide off, but honestly, when I had them unlaced in just the warm up a couple times, I felt like it, it was fine. The boot wasn't sliding around. I didn't feel like it was gonna come off my foot. So that was a really um, good feeling. And then when I did tighten the laces down, it really, really was just secure on my foot. So again, no slippage there. Lockdown was, was pretty good, uh, just, you know, Vapors and, and vapors and superflies aren't very good for wide feet, so that's that's just an issue I had in terms of pain. And you know, I had to almost play with loose and laces because it was so just tight on my foot. But the lockdown was there and it was good. Moving on to the upper, it wasn't something that I was really a big fan of. Uh, you know, coming from the last superfly um, that I wore, the superfly five, it had that really nice Nike skin coating, kind of similar to what was on the Hyper Venom ones and the superfly fours if you know what i'm talking about uh, it, it would like it would mostly on the superfly fours like if you wore them it would start to peel off of the boots like you'd still have the knit and like material underneath and then that stuff would peel off that's kind of what i was used to and then coming to this it just wasn't quite the same it is a decent like synthetic upper and you know it didn't really grip the ball that well which is not something i look for and sometimes i find doesn't help as much but it also didn't like give me anything that i felt like hey this is crazy this is super stand out and it didn't really stretch well either, so I had a hard time um, really breaking these boots in, which I don't think I broke in properly, and I'll get to that in the next segment. Um, and it did have the, the regular knit knit material here, like fly knit upper that most Nike boots have these days. If not, I want to say all besides the Nike Premier. I could be wrong, but you know, it's, so it's, it's a knit upper here, you know, what you expect. It's nothing out of the ordinary, nothing different or that stands out to me, so it's just an okay knit upper. And also with the collar, I was surprised I did not get blisters. I got blisters when I wore the Superfly 5s a couple times and had to wear like a, a thing called Second Skin, which was like a gel material over the blister and then like wrap it. Didn't have to do that with these at all out of any of the times I wore them. So that's super cool. I don't know if it's Nike improving or if I just got lucky or if I just have built up calluses on like my heel and Achilles area. It could be any of those. But you know, I'm not a fan of collared boots. I have only reviewed, I want to say, the Puma Future Ultimates is the only other collar boot I've reviewed the last couple months besides these. So nothing I'm big on personally, but I didn't find that that really made a difference. I also just don't like when I look down and see the collar. I don't know why I just really like low cut boots. I'm, again, I'm really weird. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was, it was okay upper overall. Nothing that really stands out. Didn't really stretch well. Didn't accommodate my feet well. So not really an upper that I would give a great rating, but not something that I would give a bad rating. It's kind of just there, kind of just meh. All right, now we're gonna go on to fit, which is the topic that I want to get into the most. And I went with the size 9 US, my typical size I wear in Nike. And you know, it was okay. I actually wore a nine and a half in the Superfly 5 and the Hypervenom 3, I, I, for some reason, back way back in the day, now I wear a nine in Hypervenom 3s. But you know, so, so I wore these in a nine, they fit really well. I didn't feel like there was any extra space in the toe, which was a very big plus for me because I hate when that happens. It's always awkward for me trying to put boots on and, and try them on. So I would say if you wear a nine in Tiempos, if you wear a nine in the Phantom GX, if you wear a nine in Mercurials, get the nine, you'll be okay there. Uh, or just get the size you normally get. Again, I will never say true to size, but get the, get the size you normally wear. And in terms of the, the fit for my wide feet, it was, it was murderous. It was not fun. It was um, not, a great, not a great experience. I had lots of issues, lots of pain and I, you know, first couple times I wore them, had to take them off after like 20-ish minutes. I was able to play like a full session in them. And they felt okay. Nothing, again, that really stood out to me. And it was always weird when I was trying to break these in and then switch to a pair of boots that didn't have the air zoom, air, air zoom unit in them. But, you know, that's gonna happen when you're switching between boots. 
Again, maybe I didn't wear these long enough to break them in. That, that could just have been my issue. I only, like I said, wore them four or five times. I've been finding that I've been having trouble making enough time to wear all these boots properly and also still wear the boots that I like to wear because, you know, I do like to wear all the cool boots in, in my 11 Pros and stuff. I don't just like to wear boots in games when I'm testing them, whether I don't like them or, you know, I just like to, you know, wear what I like. So that is something I've been improving on personally is making time to wear these more. So maybe that was the issue with the fit and the, the, the stretching of this boot was that I just didn't give it time to break in. You know, after four or five times of wearing a boot, usually I'd like them to be broken in. But again, it is also synthetic material. And when dealing with some synthetics, sometimes it takes time for them to break down and stretch. So that could have just been the issue there. Again, not really high praise in that area. It did fit well. It did fit my foot snug, which was great. Just, you know, too tight, didn't stretch. And if I didn't say already, I think this is a boot you could wear without laces. Uh, maybe not when you break them in. I think that's when they'll you know, be wide enough and they might slip out. But I actually wore an old pair of Superfly 4s without laces pretty much since the day I, um, I got them used from somebody. So, you know, you still can do it when they're broken in. It just might, you know, they might slip off a little bit more. So just be wary of that. But if you're someone who, you know, I've seen guys do it all the time. I, I've seen pros do it a couple times where they just pull the laces out. So you could probably get away with that. Um, I definitely could have just because of how tight they were. But again, I kept the laces in and um, they just didn't, didn't really widen how I wanted them to overall. But sometimes you just gotta roll with what you get. <laughs> going to my overall thoughts, I'm just gonna go ahead and say these boots are just okay, just plain, just there. Um, you know, maybe if they fit my foot better, maybe if I like the touch on the ball more. Um, the Air Zoom unit, to me, it's a cool piece of tech, I guess. It definitely makes a difference for a little bit, and then like I said, if you switch to a different pair, you know something else. You, you realize like something has happened and you're missing something. But again, I don't think it's something you need or something that is necessarily missing from your game or helping you improve with sprinting or, or whatever. Did it make the boots more comfortable? Maybe, but you know, my issue with boots is never the sole plate, it's never the insole, it's always the width. And because I either A, didn't give them enough time to break in, or B, they just didn't really stretch well, aren't great for good feet, um, I, that's just, you know, to me, I didn't really get to um, pay attention as much to how comfortable they were, I guess. But again, air zoom unit, <laughs> Air zoom unit technology is cool, but you know, it doesn't really do anything. I don't think so. I did like the sole plate. I do like these TriStar studs, you know, a bit of a mouthful, but definitely decent performing studs. They don't grip turf too much to where you're afraid to wear these boots on turf. I know tons of guys who wear FG Vapors and Superflies on turf. No issues there. Uh, again, you know, the bladed studs in the back are always nice. I'd like that Nike's done this the last 15, 20 years probably. I think it's always been bladed studs to be honest. And you know, you can see the air zoom unit through. I guess that's cool, but again, like I said, you know, nothing crazy there. However, because they are the same studs for the most part that are on the Phantom GX, I think it would actually be interesting for Nike to put this air zoom sole plate on the Phantom GX. And I think the way the Phantom GX is set up, it, it's definitely better for wide feet. And getting to test the Phantom GX with the air zoom unit, for personally, for my for my benefit alone, is, is the only reason I want this. But I think it would allow me to really feel if that air zoom unit does anything. And maybe we'll get some sort of Frankenstein boot like that. I mean, we saw with the Phantom Venom Ultra or Phantom Flynet Ultra. No, Phantom Venom Ultra, that you know, it's a mix of all these boots. We saw with the Pred Copa X, a mix of all these boots. So maybe they'll do it again and maybe they'll give us this sole plate on the GX. Because to be honest, even though I, I didn't rate the GX as highly, I do think it's a decent performing boot and maybe that would only add to it. The overall rating for this boot is just gonna be a 6.5 out of 10. I wasn't really impressed with the fact that my foot couldn't fit in it and it hurt. I wasn't a big, big fan of this synthetic upper. I didn't get to experience the air zoom unit as much as I wanted to. And even though I did wear the boots, you know, I felt like, yeah, I could tell, I could tell, again, I could tell there's something there, but you know, did it really do anything. So overall, 6.5 out of 10. It is the lowest rating boot, the lowest rated boot that I've done so far, but that doesn't mean it's a trash boot. It's just not something I personally enjoy wearing as much. And I don't think I will throw the Superfly 9 into my collection. And really it's just gonna depend on how the Super, or the Vapor 15 does to kind of just see my overall thoughts on the current Mercurial line before the next gen comes out, which I'm assuming is going to be. And that's all I have for you guys today. Please make sure to drop a comment down below. I love having discussions with you guys, hearing your opinions, your experiences with boots, which are your favorite, which you don't like, all that stuff. And also, if you could do me a huge favor, if you could subscribe, drop a like, that would be great. And I'll catch you guys in the next review.